What's up, everyone, and welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey, all right, guys, and welcome to another episode of Dad Crypto Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Luna Vega, and today I'm really excited to have a very, very special guest with me. Her name is Tessie Moraine. Did I say your last name correctly? It's okay. I, I, like, I like variations. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I always butcher last names. Um, I uh, blame the fact that my French accent just uh, completely yeah, kills everyone's last name. So I apologize oh, in advance. Good. But uh, super excited to have her. So not only is she the founder of Women in Blockchain, but she's also the director, Global Product and Innovation for Consensus an incubator for projects built on the Ethereum blockchain. So thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Live from New York City. Live from New York City, and thanks for the invite. Yeah, anytime. So I would love, before we get started, hear a little bit about your background and uh, how you got involved in the blockchain space. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, a, good, that's a good question. I, I always like to ask that too, because um, I think it's really important that People actually come from their heart and, and talk about their passion because usually blockchain involves passion. So um, quick background on me. Currently, I'm uh, one of the co-contributors to liquidity.io. Um, it's about liquidity and equality, as you can tell by the name. And um, it's a, a protocol that should allow everyone to exchange value with anyone. So we're in a very early phase of that, uh, just releasing the MVP. I'm very excited about this. And as you can tell, it's value driven. So um, how did I get into blockchain? Um, I worked previously um, in a startup. It was my startup um, and built a digital library. And um, that was the first time where I was thinking about access. Who is going to have access, right? And so I saw the internet as um, something that will provide access to everyone. And as we know today, uh, in parts, that's true. Um, it was the first decentralized technology uh, on a bigger scale. But um, being, um, you know, having been in, in Internet 1.0 and having seen um, the things that worked and then also the things that didn't quite pan out the way I thought, um, I'm really urgently now in in blockchain because I want to make sure that the hopes we have for blockchain that we actually see them come to fruition mm -hmm. and so um, so what I had uh, envisioned for for um, the internet was that everybody has access right and so in, in this application I was also collaborating with the University of um, Addis Ababa and it was about giving licenses and in, in the digital way that's actually pretty easy right you can just mm -hmm. like extend a license and make sure that people are part of something. But um, as we know that um, the internet kind of progressed into being quite uh, corporate at this point and um, excluding, or um, the other thing that we didn't really think about back then was data. Yeah. Um, data, we, we have become the products of corporations. And so um, because of that experience, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really um, passionate about making sure that what I think blockchain represents, um, another chance to create uh, more equality and inclusion, um, that we actually stay on track this time and, and really look at, I mean, you know, in innovation, you have to push the, the envelope and there will always be mistakes, but we have to make sure that those mistakes are, um, you know, something that we can learn from quickly and that we can innovate and um, improve on fast. Um, before we let this like grow out of proportion. So um, I worked uh, during the financial crisis um, as a product strategist um, in the investment bank of JP Morgan. So I had a front seat to um, to everything that was going on. And I was like, whoa, you know, this is, this is actually not working so well. And um, there's a lot of um, 
inefficient in the banks to say the least, but there's a huge risk. And I uh, followed up with um, working with Occupy, the alternative banking group. And um, one lucky day, um, I heard about decentralization. That was in 2014. Um, it was at Burning Man in the desert. And, I think I uh, heard this story. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And, and so um, and I followed up with like another decentralization lecture the year after. Uh, during the storm, I heard about the blockchain. And so this is really where for me, um, activism and belief and experience, professional experience in the financial world, but also with startups, everything kind of comes together, right? So it's, um, it's my belief that we really, as a human species, should ensure that everybody has the basics mm -hmm. and um, can participate, that we shouldn't have, um, you know, transactions that are not worth it. Um, which means that they would be representing people who are not worth it, right? So there are about um, 3 billion people today who are unbanked. And I'm not um, promoting that they should be banked, but I'm promoting that they should be able to be taking part in, in economic systems, right? And so um, blockchain um, can be that, but uh, it's not necessarily that, right? So that's why it's so important to understand um, you know, what what type of blockchain and what type of technology we want to promote and uh, work on, particularly as diverse voices and diverse being minorities, which are really the majority. Yeah. Like the majority of people are actually minorities. So so we have the power. So um, And yeah. you have such an interesting, interesting background coming from the finance world as well, which I agree is very male centric, I would say even more so than the tech industry, having been in the tech industry myself for, for over a decade. So it's really interesting now. Um, thankfully, there's more and more women in the space, but Often I've gone to conferences and felt a little uneasy. I love the fact that there's no lines in the women's bathroom, but um, it also feels a little intimidating at time. And I love the fact that there's really a push to as to have as much inclusion as possible. And, uh, you know, everyone is really encouraging more women to come into the space. But what do you think we can do overall to drive for even more inclusion and not just women, but just minorities in general as well to to come into the yeah. space? Um, that's, uh, I think uh, the analogy to financial is actually an interesting one, because um, after the financial crisis, um, Wall Street did understand that the banks that fell first were actually uh, more driven by male values. Um, so the culture was much more male. And um, I don't think Wall Street really cared about like a, a, a pretty gesture um, towards minorities or women. But um, after that, there was a lot of activity in terms of like women networks. Um opportunities within within this ecosystem so i would say um what what is that really depends on like what does one see in in blockchain right so a lot of people let's say i mean there, there are these two camps sort of there's like the crypto world yes. and there's a the blockchain world yes and agreed so, um, crypto, <laughs> I, yeah, crypto i would say is probably a bit more driven by uh, opportunity uh, for financial gain. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. That's perfect. That's amazing. We had this major bubble, brought us a lot of people in. Um, so at that point, um, you know, convert those people and make sure that they understand, hey, there is, there's another opportunity in blockchain and um, the underlying technology of, of your crypto. And um, so what could that mean for you? So... Um, and then how are you engaged, right? And and what, what are the promises, actually? So the promises are censorship resistance. The promises are permissionless. The promises um, are tamper-proof. So um, they are all about inclusion, right? Yeah, it's interesting you say that, though. I think a lot of individuals, including myself, I learned about blockchain through Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin sort of on top of the food chain, if you will, in the sense that that's the first sort of interaction you're going to have with this weird world of digital assets. And as you start understanding it more, then you start 
getting acquainted with Ethereum, understanding the blockchain, and then understanding all the potential opportunities within the ecosystem. And I think one thing that you said as well is understanding how as an individual you fit in into the big picture and understanding the fact that you don't necessarily need to be a techie to be involved. And I think um, when I met you actually in Berlin, you did such a great job because uh, you had a woman in in blockchain meetup in Berlin, which I was uh, super thankful to be able to attend in, in real life. And you made such a valid point about the fact that there's opportunities in PR, there's opportunities in marketing and every sort of spectrum of that you would find in any other sort of corporate industry within the blockchain. So can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So, I mean, your entry into blockchain is a natural and beautiful one because, I mean, Bitcoin was basically the first um, and purest um, implementation of value, right? Yeah. I mean, this is like, this is as, as good as it gets, right? I mean, this is like, there is, um, it's fully disintermediated. And, um, you know, there's a transaction between, between two parties. I mean, that's, that's a really good example already. Um, where, what was the question again? Now, how did this? Uh, yeah, wait, so how, I mean, how essentially, we, how, how can we stay on track with? Uh, yeah, and how many and uh, all the different types of opportunities that you think there is within within the industry. So as we like, kind of move away from the from the original Bitcoin um, blockchain, um, Ethereum blockchain, for example, has different uh, opportunities. It's uh, you know the the DApps that we built and that we can interact with, and that we have to. Um, look at um, there are you know different benefits uh, that that can be derived from there, and um, again we have to make sure the further away we come from the original um, that you know we don't just like uh, put this intermediation in a smart contract um, that can in the end be subpoenaed or something. So we have to be we have to be really always coming back to the core promise of like what what do we actually want to do? What's the purpose of this, right? Mm -hmm. And so. What's beautiful about um, blockchain for me is, and, and I see this in both um, Bitcoin and um, Ethereum, is, for example, the, the challenge of the notion of power, right? So here we're talking about um, this intermediation, like there's nobody in the middle anymore, or decentralization, which is like um, not fully disintermediated, there's n not nobody in the middle, but, you know, it's it's decentralized so they're not the central authorities and so what does that to power in our understanding and so how do we as for example women or other minorities how do, how do we look at this um, rather than thinking oh um, there is another opportunity to grab power we can actually reinvent power and we can do power differently and I think this is a really important point to make for example the way we grow uh, women in blockchain, the women in blockchain community is um, decentralized. So it's not like, oh, we are like the mothership and then we give the rules to everybody. But um, there are guiding principles that all the communities should, um, you know, develop uh, with from the bottom up uh, with the local language and their local um, issues that they want to talk about. But, you know, so that we are on the page that we are already, um, you know, living the, the, the opportunities that, that blockchain brings to us. How did you come up with um, the idea of women in blockchain? Well, I mean, that's part of my activism that I've been doing forever. You know, it was like I was actually also, in, um, you know, active in, in women organizations on Wall Street. Um, and so women in blockchain just seem to be a, another version of that. Another, another avenue, extension. yeah. Yeah, and it's really, I mean, uh, let me like turn around for a moment. But it's really, <laughs> yeah, you have to show us your t-shirt. What does it can say? You, all people, one world. Oh, move. Yeah, yeah I see it. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> women in blockchain, all people, one world. So it's really, it's really about that, right? It's not about, um, you know, like one group dominating. It's like, I'm focusing on the women because we have to get the numbers up. We have to get the, the women involved. We have to get all minorities involved, right? Um, and we, in the end, it's really about all people, one world, right? It's, it's, that's it. I mean, we are much more intelligent if, 
if you have everybody there. So how many chapters do you have right now? So there are about 15 chapters. Um, no, actually, probably more by now. Um, and so the way it works is, uh, you know, we, we talk about the, the values and then they go off and do their own thing. You know, so they, they can use our logo. There are tons of other women organizations out there. Mm -hmm. But um, what I see is that a lot of them, they're really functioning um, by the old power structures. And, and, you know, they're dominating. They're having these exclusive events. And, and we're about inclusive, right? We don't want to, like, have the separation. We want to empower everybody. And um, so we even run the, the meetups slightly different. We make sure that everybody... Um, there, there are a lot of breakout sessions. We make sure that everybody gets to say something during the meetup. Um, so there are lots of nuances that, um, you know, change the way things are done. And coming from um, this understanding of like, what does, because we all, we all socialize the same way, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for us, for women, the same as for men, as for anyone, it's, it's um, you know, power, power looks a certain way. And, we have to really unlearn that certain things are powerful because otherwise there would always be the male qualities. And there are a lot of young women who also, um, you know, perpetuate those qualities because it seems to get you further and faster, you know. But if we want to create a different world and if we want to really um, translate what blockchain can be, um, this is one opportunity to, you know, redefine what, what power looks like and how we live power. It's not about me, me, me. It's really about community and equality. And I know that a chapter recently opened in Barcelona. So if you're in Barcelona, make sure to uh, check out Meetup. And you guys also have a Slack channel, which is great because there's uh, so many different discussions. I know that when I was organizing my event in Berlin, I was able to go in there, promote the event. Uh, and it's just a great opportunity to connect with other women in the blockchain space. Yeah, it's a whole Slack. It's a, it's a women in blockchain Slack. And um, it's unfortunately um, a women only Slack, entirely women only, but it's important. Um, it's a non-paid version. So there is no like a uh, single member. Otherwise, we would have the allies. We have amazing male allies. So I'm, and, and they're always welcome to come to the meetups. But the Slack channel is women uh, focused and women only. And um, it's with all the chapters and it's global. And, you know, we have uh, a good network if a speaker is needed somewhere. I mean, these are realities, right? I mean, for some reason, um, panels have problems finding females. Yes. Right? So, and we can actually show you where the females are. So, yeah. women have to step out of the invisibility and support each other um, to to be on panels and to um, just be there and be role models and, you know, have fun with it and, um, you know, find more allies and males. And I just wanted to say you're, you're getting a hello from Lauren, Lauren Slade. Oh, hey, <laughs> yeah, in Puerto Rico. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I <laughs> love it. I love it. Um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've seen in, in several groups that I follow, whether it's Telegram, Slack, or Facebook, uh, there's really a push to have as many panelists, women panelists, and it's great to be able to have those resources. So what would you recommend? Do you guys also have your own Facebook or do you have multiple Facebook groups? Like, how does that yeah, work right now? Facebook groups are usually more local. Okay. Um, so we're about to launch a website. And again, you know, I mean, even on a website, it's like, it's not like one uh, website that, that covers everybody, but we... we we're very specific about having like tiles, like it's literally a link collection because we want to make sure that people understand, you know, this is like, it's, it's a website, but everybody is the same, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a link collection for every location. And yeah, look forward to that. It should come out soon. And um, so uh, we have Twitter um, and we have several socials and I can post them. And um, if women want to join uh, the Slack channel, I would probably be, uh, nice to connect to the global community that way. I'll make sure to include a link as well. So what can we do in general to help uh, your organization? Or if, if someone might be in a city where there's no chapters, like what's the next step for them? What can they do? They can start it um, if they're interested, uh, whether they're novices to blockchain or experience. It's really about getting something started and then seeing people 
join and other people being interested and then we support and uh, different chapters support and there are amazing chapters across the world i mean it's really amazing how this works and how you know people travel and then they go to visit other chapters and it's, it's really nice to see that and be, be closely connected to like a lot of the the different women and it's, it's really beautiful and um, so if anybody would like to start a chapter um, you know first step would be maybe if you post the um, contact info to contact us or um, and then we help you get started in your location by like just giving you what we learned like kind of like a playbook that's awesome. Yeah, I'll make sure to include all that information in there. So what are sort of your next steps? Like, what do you want to do next with this? With the women in blockchain? Yeah. Probably, probably eventually, like, you know, um, um, maybe a, a conference or something where we come together um, and and um, or retreat uh, would be nice. Ah, um, I would love a so, retreat. <laughs> yes, that would be nice. And um, so, and, and again, I mean, what's really important is to to understand, you know, that um, we are about um, community and bottom up. There are tons of conferences out there, and it's not about like pushing your product or pushing something. It's really about um, we don't have a financial interest. Um, so it's really about empowering everyone in the community. So if you want to be part of it, be part of it, participate. You know that's that's really how you. And also, we're in, be there. in in such early stage of the blockchain and it's something that we might have forgotten when we were having the ball market last year it, there was such a trenzy that we sort of got ahead of ourselves, and it's been a really great I mean personally it's been a really great experience to have things slow down a bit also I think that there were a lot of bad players out there as well especially um, within the crypto space unfortunately so I think we're going through a really healthy stage, the, the maturing, if you will, of the market. And I'm really excited as to what will come next. Like, what do you, what do you look at? And then also, I mean, women should also, um, you know, I mean, anybody can, can do this, but it's, it's really, I think we should start with ourselves to understand, like, we have to support other women, yeah. right? So we have to recognize their power and we have to understand, uh, you know, and value um, the way, women do certain things perhaps differently and the female qualities which can also be owned by males that's that's just like a range everybody has and um so you know invest in female projects uh, uh make sure that you know we support the co-founders the female co-founders um those kind of things hire hire women look for uh, tech women look for non-tech women which you know non-tech is tech is such a big thing in this space but really if you look at leadership qualities, those are the soft skills, right? Uh, soft skills doesn't really sound so good, but um, those are leadership skills, you know? And so, um, and there are amazing women in any kind of like uh, job out there. And, um, you know, look for purpose. This is your opportunity. You know, we can, we can do something here that, um, you know, really brings change to society. And, and, you know, let's get involved in those kind of projects. So I have an interesting question for you because I just read a few days ago an article I stumbled upon of a push to actually stop women-only panels within conferences um, as essentially the argument was, well, uh, it's muting women's voice. And actually would tend to agree because a lot of time um, these all women-led panels, like obviously there's not a lot of men who attend. So what's your personal opinion about those kind of panels and how these conferences in the future should move forward as far as having more inclusion. Like, what's your take on it? <laughs> I think it's funny. It's funny because nobody ever wondered about, like, the male-only panel or the white-only <laughs> panel, right? So nobody. But the moment you have, like, women-only, it's like, oh, my God, that's horrible, you know? <laughs> um, frankly, I couldn't care less, right? Really, that's what it should be. Um, but on the other hand, um, depends on the topic, right? If it's a, if it's like about whatever women in blockchain communities, yeah, let them let them all be women, right? If it makes sense, you know. But if it doesn't make sense, um, it shouldn't it shouldn't uh, you well, know, make often, a difference. 
Yeah, often it feels like, oh, we need women in this conference. Let's just make a women, all women panel. And it just feels like it's, no, there's not much totally thought behind it. And I've also been to conferences where agreed with you is per purposeful and it was talking about the problems that we are experiencing uh, within the community and addressing those very topics but uh, but also there's the opposite so i mean how, how i mean for me personally i think that we should just make sure that there's proper representation in all the main stage and all the main panels versus just having like oh here's your women panel like check mark yeah like a token yeah like yeah. A token so, and also i mean you know um just to have women or just to have a brown person or just to you know it, it, that doesn't create diversity no, right diversity doesn't. is really like looking for like you know do these people have diverse point of views you know uh, it's a diverse background generally yes you know if you if you take a um you know rough comb and, and just try to like you know bring something in by numbers um, it's it's good. I mean, it's good to have a, a balance.